Alright guys, small little update. So what I did was I worked out the headband and then I started building the hair around it. So as you can see, the hair goes around it, it's tucked in, so it kind of looks like the headband is around it. So, And what I try to do here is I try to follow this hair to kind of match this so it's kind of like uniformed. So working out pretty good so far. Um, as you can see here, what I did was I drilled into the shoulders and I really drilled into the back. Like I drilled here and I drilled across here and I drilled around the crack area. So it's kind of like a staple effect. So there's a pin here, a pin here, and then I also pinned it in here because I wanted to make sure. So as you can see as I sand it down, you can see where the crack is. And it's still not completely flush yet, so I have to prime and get it all. But that's pretty much to, you know, make sure that that crack doesn't come off down the line or anything. Um... Just wanted to make sure. I, d I drilled in pretty deep. Like I, this one right here, I kind of drilled in all the way down at an angle. So when I put in the pin, it's kind of going across. So that, I'm pretty happy with the way that came out. And what I'll probably do is maybe throw a little bit of a wrinkle under here and stuff too as well. But that's where we're at with that. So next steps as I come across is probably try to get some hands on her. But before I do the hands, I'm going to work out the star here. Work out the star here. And then after that, once everything's looking pretty good, it's a matter of the hands, and I think that'll be pretty much it. Uh, I don't think she really has anything else than that, so we'll come back with some more updates. Alright guys, so now I need to do the star on her chest, and I also need to do the star on her leg. Now, if you've worked on polystone, like I've worked on a lot of polystone uh, statues and resin, um, it's very difficult to score on it. And if you want to sculpt from scratch like a star, it's, it's still very, you could do it and then you can sand it down. But I like to give myself kind of like a guideline where I can get the star almost as perfect because sculpting it from scratch, it might look awkward and stuff. So what I like to do is I came up with an idea of going into Illustrator and on my printer I pr print out the object. So I have a couple different sizes here because when I measured them, uh, you know, sometimes I measure and I over measure or I under measure, so I like to cut, make a couple different sizes, go up to the item, and so this one was the correct size. So then what I did was, when exact knife and ruler on a flat surface, I cut out the star. Now what I like to do is, I'll get some of my glue with my zip kicker, or Insta Set, whatever you have, and I will glue this on there and let it sit. And then the next day, what I'll do is, I will go in with a Dremel tool that I have that's kind of like a saw at the end of it. It's a spinning saw. Um, it works really good if you can line it up and you can give yourself guidelines. And then what I like to do is I make these guidelines very rough. But so when I go to sculpt on it and the star is raised off her chest, I, I'm working with the correct guidelines and everything's even. Now I'll, I'll show you in the garage when we get to that after I get the star on. Uh, the Dremel tool I have is very dangerous. You can pretty much just you know, it's got a kickback where if it gets stuck in the resin, it'll just kick back on you and you can cut yourself. And I learned early in the day when I first got this all years back that it is very dangerous and you got to take your time and just be patient with it. Uh, but then there's other tools and other general tools you can do and stuff. So this is kind of what I do. It's just giving you an idea. Now, I, I might be doing something very difficult, very, very going too many extra steps. I know a lot of the sculptors that have been in the business years can 
probably just bang out the star just by winning it, you know, and doing what they do. But this is what I've come up with. So we're going to show you how I get on the star, and then we'll go into the garage, we'll do the Dremel tool, and then from there I'll show you how I sculpt onto that using that guideline. It's a little bit of extra steps, but, you know, just what I've come up with so far. Alright, so basically now I have the pieces glued on and it's pretty much all set. It's uh, it's messy, it's dirty, but that's fine. That's the way uh, I want it to work. I also did the uh, back piece under there. I mean, right now it looks absolutely perfect and the way you would want it, far away, but it's still got to be sculpted in or, you know, done up. So there's a couple ways of doing this. Uh, I'm going to pretty much let this sit overnight. When I get a chance, we'll go into the garage and I'll show you how I actually cut out the line work. Um, you can actually cut out the line work, leave it as is, and clean it up. Or you can use the guide, the line work as a, you know, template to sculpt it and make the star, uh, you know, come up off of her chest. So there's two ways of doing it. Uh, but like I said, this is you know polystone, and it's very tough to work with. And it's not like you know sculptors can work on their wax sculpt or their sculpty and basically get in there and carve out the line work that they need to carve where it's still soft and then they can bake it. I'm pretty much working on the final thing and it's pretty much a rock. That's the problem I run into. So this is kind of what I came up with. So like I said, we'll get into the garage and we'll cut out the line work and I'll show you what I do. Alright guys, so we're back. So now I'm going to start doing up the uh, lines and giving my guy. Now this is the Dremel tool I was talking about. It's kind of like a saw at the end. Um, very dangerous, very sharp, it does a kickback, um, so you got to kind of position yourself correctly when you want to do it. You can't just sit there and, you know, just do this because it will kick back on you. You kind of really want to hold tight and you want to get into certain areas going like this. Now you have to kind of play with the statue too, how you want to get the line because you want to have this comfortable and be able to go nice and slow. Now this type of tool you can't really turn because if you turn this gets caught and then you get burns and you get issues and if you are got a very light hand you don't have strong you can do it and it can kick back on you and you don't want to have fingers near it and slice your finger because I've learned all that so make sure you have your safety goggles I got my safety goggles on and I'm going to just start trying to do some line work so we'll set up get comfortable and we'll start doing some just to give you an idea one, one. Alright, so pretty much I did all the line work, and the next step is you just kind of want to scrape off the paper because since it's glue, it just kind of comes right off. So you get kind of a guide marks. 
Um, just a word of advice, if you use the glue that I was using and you use this tool, you're burning the glue and you do get some fumes kicked back in your face. So it is kind of potent like glue. So you just kind of want to either use a mask or just try not to breathe it in. But because it's primed and because you glue on it, it kind of just comes right off. See? So it's not sticking to the resin. It's not perfect, but that's because it's just guidelines for putting on some aves later. And I didn't go to this point, this point, this point, or this point because I'm going to use the aves to get out further. It's kind of the line work around here is what you want to get. But if you do it well enough, you don't even have to use aves. You can kind of just get it done and then you got line marks all over. So, even though it's kind of messy, you might want to just take some sandpaper. And there you go. Got some uh, guidelines for using some aims. So, I just got to clean it up a little bit more, and that kind of helps me out. So we'll do, I'll do this next, then we'll come back and start doing all the A's work. Alright guys, uh, finishing up part 4 of the Super Custom Mashup. So as you can see right now, I pretty much have the star. I did a little bit of a black paint wash in there, so it gives me an idea of where all my line work is. So we're working out pretty cool. Uh, as you can see, this is polystone resin. This is A's in here. If the breasts were all A's, I'd be able just to kind of scrape it and I could leave it alone. But because it's polystone, it's very difficult to work with. So... Basically, all we have left now is we got to get hands on her. We got to finish up the uh, headband up here. I'm going to magnetize a piece in there so it comes in and out. Uh, for her hands, going to do some kind of a sculpt where it's kind of like painted up metallic-y. So we get that uh, kind of like glowing type stuff off of her hands. And I also did the star on her back leg. Now, because this was a lot of A's here, I might just kind of leave this and not actually sculpt the star onto it because it's kind of clean. Like I said, sometimes that tool, I can get really clean lines. It works out and I'm done. I don't need to do anything. Whereas other times I'm doing it and it's just a complete wreck because sculpt working on certain areas is very difficult. So, uh, not much more to go. Uh, basically, we got a little bit more sculpting, some more details. And once all that's done, we start painting her up. So, we'll be back with part five when I start sculpting the star on her chest. Thank <laughs> you.